I want to take a little bit of time in this video to review a process that is probably somewhere in Algebra 2 or pre-calculus that you might not necessarily do a lot with and then there might come times later on in math when you have to go back and recall these ideas and, and the one that we'll talk about in this video is called completing the square and the example that I want to kind of refer to here to hopefully convince you that this is a, a legitimate process is this equation right here. So if we want to try to solve this equation, one thing that we could do is we could try to use the quadratic formula. We could try to subtract 11 from that side, go ahead and try to use the quadratic formula. I guess alternatively, we could try to solve it by factoring as well. Uh, if you've ever seen where the quadratic formula comes from, though, it actually comes from using the process that we're going to be checking out over the course of these next few lines. And so if we want to try to solve this equation, the, the big issue with it right now is we have an x squared term, and we also have this x to the first term. And those are not like terms, so we're not going to have success with isolating x unless we do something kind of creative here. And that's what completing the square allows us to do. Uh, if we take this left side of the equation and we try to put something in this gap right here that lets us turn around and factor the expression on the left side of the equation as a perfect square trinomial, we're going to have success with isolating a single x. So what I put right here in this gap was I put 25 there. And the reason why I chose to put plus 25 in that gap is because I was thinking about this next line that you see written out and if I put a plus 25 right here and I try to factor I'm gonna have x plus 5 times x plus 5 is what I foil out to get to this expression now I can't get away with just putting a plus 25 on the left side of the equal sign it is an equation so I've got to keep the thing balanced so you see I also went ahead and added a 25 on the right side of the equal sign as well and then I did do that step of factoring, like you see from this line to this line. This is x plus 5 times x plus 5. And x plus 5 times x plus 5 can be re-expressed as a single x plus 5 quantity being squared. Main difference between here and here, same equation equivalent to the first one, uh, but this has a single x in it we'll be able to solve this by now isolating that single x, whereas we didn't have that luxury at the beginning. So if we go ahead and do the concluding steps here, uh, taking the square root of each side to undo the exponent, it's gonna give us a plus or minus square root of 36, or a plus or minus six on the right side. I then have this plus five that I've gotta to take to the right side to totally isolate x, and if I subtract five and then have my plus or minus six sitting there, here are the two solutions that I end up with. And you'll get those same two solutions if you use the quadratic formula, if you use factoring in this case, uh, but like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the quadratic formula is just a generalized application of what we're looking at right here. So let's kind of look at some geometry that's associated with this idea, because we don't really want to have to rely on guess and check, basically, to try to figure out what to put in this empty spot to allow us to turn around and factor what we have on the new line as a perfect square trinomial. And so if we take a look at these two figures, and adding their areas together. This is an x by x square, and this is a b by x rectangle. So the total area enclosed by these two figures is x squared plus bx. Now if I cut this rectangle in half vertically right here, and then spin one of these sides and kind of put it down along the, the bottom edge of the square that we started with, uh, the total area enclosed by this square and these two rectangles, which is just, again, the splitting up of this B by X rectangle on the left side diagram, it's going to be the same. Um, now, check out what we have here. What we have is we have this outer region here that would form a square. The only piece that we're missing is this little component that sits down here in the lower right. So if you think about this as one of the two sides of your square, right, so from here to here, and you think about the distance from here to here as the other dimension of your outer square, that kind of should indicate to us what the dimensions of the little missing square would be that sit down in the lower right-hand corner here. Uh, this total distance is x plus b over 2, right? We, we had b units here, but then we cut that into, half, into two halves. So we have x plus b over 2 there, we have x plus b over 2 across the top here. So what are the dimensions of this little square that sits in the lower 
right hand corner to complete the square we're going to have to add a, a square whose dimensions are b over 2 by b over 2 so the area of the square that you see right here that's in green is b over 2 times b over 2 or b over 2 squared so geometrically this might kind of help you see what we're going to talk about on the next screen uh, what we want to basically be able to do is we want to be able to complete the square anytime we have a quadratic expression sitting in front of us. And this is going to help us do some integrals over the next few weeks. Um, might be used for you eventually to, to graph some shapes by hand. Uh, conic sections would be graphed with this method, parabolas, hyperbolas, ellipses, circles, things like that that I'm sure some of you have done a little bit with in the past, but some of you will probably do quite a bit more with in the future. But this is the generalized formula for completing the square. If you have x squared plus bx, right, the, that was the dimensions of the x by x square and then the b by x rectangle when we found the area of each and added them together. We're starting with these two pieces, basically, if, if we're thinking about it as an area calculation. What did we have to add to this sum in order to create something that was a perfect square? What we had to add to it was the area of that little square that fills in the lower right-hand corner here, b over 2 being squared. And so anytime we put b over 2 squared into this blank at the end of a quadratic expression that looks like this, we're always going to be able to turn around and factor our expression as x plus whatever b was divided by 2 quantity being squared. And that's definitely what happened to us in, in the specific application of this back here. So I kind of did this first one by guess and check. I put a plus 25 there. Well, check out how it factored. It factored to x plus b over 2 times x plus b over 2, which was x plus b over 2, 5 squared. So if we want to just kind of practice this one more time, and then I'll do some videos that actually involve this within some integrals, uh, we can check out this expression down here. What value would we have to replace c with in order to have this expression factor as a perfect square trinomial? Well, b is negative 24. We take b over 2, and it's negative 12 b over 2 squared is 144. So what happens if we put 144 in this empty spot here at the end in place of the constant c? Well, try to factor this. Well, if you if you factor this by reverse foiling, you're going to get x minus 12 times x minus 12 as what you need to have for the factored form of this expression. And x minus 12 times x minus 12 is, of course, x minus 12 quantity squared. What's the shortcut? Well, according to our formula right here, if we put b over 2 squared in place of the constant c right here, our expression is definitely going to factor to x plus b over 2 squared. We'll check out what b over 2 was. b over 2 was negative 12, and that's exactly what we got, x plus negative 12 squared, or x minus 12 quantity squared.